All right, so today I'm gonna answer the question that's been on everybody's mind. Does Portra 160 suck? So if you've been into film photography for any length of time, it's no secret that Kodak has a holy trinity, if you will, of Portra film stocks, 160, 400, and 800. And I'm gonna really focus on 160 and 400 today because they're the most similar. Portra 800 is kind of its own thing. When I got into film photography about a year ago, I started gathering up all the film that I can find. In fact, way too much, my wife would have you know. But I really wanted to start shooting some Kodak Portra, but the trouble was there was hardly ever any Portra 400 available, only Portra 160. So desperate times call for desperate measures, and I just started buying Portra 160. I didn't think too much of it at the time, but as I spent more and more time in the photography scene, I figured out why Portra 400 was always sold out, and that's because of its prevalence on other YouTube channels. At any given time, there's another film photographer making a video about how awesome Portra 400 is, and it really is a great film. I've since shot it. It's a wonderful film. But the question is, is Portra 160 so bad? Why are we just avoiding Portra 160? So let's talk about some of the strengths of Portra 400. And it goes without saying, with a higher film speed, Portra 400 is going to have a lot more flexibility. And in fact, Kodak states that in their data sheet for Portra 400. Taking a look at the technical data for the film, Kodak Professional 400 is the world's finest grained high speed color negative film. At true ISO 400 speed, this film delivers spectacular skin tones plus exceptional color saturation over a wide range of lighting conditions. Portra 400 film is the ideal choice for portrait and fashion photography as well as nature, travel, outdoor photography where the action is fast, where the lighting can't be controlled. And that goes to what I was saying, that this film is designed to be more of an all around film much more flexible. Something else that's worth pointing out about Portra 400 is it's gonna be grainier. And going back to the technical data sheets, because I know people are gonna be in the comments saying, nuh-uh, Portra 400's not grainier. Well, this is Kodak's data sheet. So we're gonna, we're gonna scroll down to the bottom here. They offer these handy dandy tables, a print grain index score of 25, apparently represents the visual threshold for graininess. Now with Portra 400, on 35 millimeter, you're gonna see the grain by some margin. On a four by six print, the grain index score is 37, eight by 10, 59, and 16 by 20, and 89. Things improve a little bit with a larger format, six by six medium format, a print grain index score of 25 on a four by six print. On eight by 10, the score decreases to a 37. And then on 16 by 20, you're up to a 59 as well. And going on down to Portra 400 and four by five, the grain Grain score on a 4x6 is less than 25, on 8x10 less than 25, and then 16x20 it's a 36. So a lot less grain present in the 4x5 sheet just because the film is so big. You're getting a lot more resolution with that larger negative, which helps negate some of that grain. Per Kodak's technical data sheet, there's going to be some grain. And this is a good time to take a look at Portra 160's technical data sheet as well. Kodak's technical data sheet for Portra 160 describes Kodak Professional Portra 160 film features a significantly finer grain structure, improved scanning, and enlarged capability in today's workflow. While retaining the exceptionally smooth and natural skin tone reproduction that Portra Film family is renowned for, Portra 160 Film is the ideal choice for portrait, fashion, and commercial photography, either in the studio or on location. So they're really touting the finer grain structure. So let's go to that part in the technical data sheet concerning the grain of 160. You can see we're in a lot better place already. On a four by six, the 35 millimeter, you have a print grain index score of 28. And if you remember it, the threshold for visibility is 25. So almost imperceptible grain on a four by six print. It increases dramatically on an eight by 10 to 50, and then 16 by 20, you're up to 79 again. How does that compare with 400 in case you forgot the scores? 37, 59, and 89. So a significant step down in terms of visibility of the grain. Taking a look at the six by six or medium format threshold, you're already under the perceptibility in the first one. On four by six with medium format, under 25, and you were at 25 on Portra 400. On eight by 10, you're at 28, whereas Portra 400 was at 37. On 16 by 20, Portra 160 is at, whereas Portra 400 was at 59. And then again, lower scores on four by five as well. So per Kodak's technical data sheets, Portra 160 is going to have finer grain, allow for larger prints, and be able to be scanned, and be able to get more usable data out of your scan. So enough of all that technical data sheet nerdiness. I'm gonna show you some pictures and let you be the judge of the image quality. We're gonna talk about a few more differences between 400 and 160. With Portra 400 being a higher speed film, it's gonna overexpose easier than Portra 160. A lot of folks are into that overexposed film look. 
heck, my channel's called Overexposed. So if that's something you're into, you're gonna be able to achieve that easier with Portra 400. In addition to that, the colors. Portra 400 is known for having more saturated colors. In fact, Kodak's own description of Portra 400 describes it as being better for outdoor and landscape photography. And the consensus opinion on Portra 400 is that it is warmer. A few more things about Portra 160. It's gonna be available more often. There aren't that many YouTubers out there hopping Portra 160. When you need to buy more film, you are probably gonna be able to find Portra 160. The film is sharper. As someone who really likes to shoot Cinestill 800T, Portra 160 is also a cooler film stock. It, the, the color temperature seems to be on average much cooler than Portra 400. So if that's something you're into, you're gonna get that look with Portra 160. And it costs about the same. The price of the two film stocks are almost identical. So what's the conclusion here? Does Portra 160 suck? Absolutely not. It's one of my most used color negative films. I love the stuff. It's easy to get great results with it, but you have to understand your limitations. It's gonna be harder shooting in low light. It's gonna be harder to overexpose shots when you need to. You're gonna be getting a super sharp film with very accurate, realistic colors that's going to serve you well. So when they don't have Portra 400 and you see Portra 160 on the shelf, don't be scared. Grab a roll. You may end up locking it. But if you want to see me using Portra 160, check out this video.